I want you to meet James Class. He's a college student from Midland Park, New Jersey. He's currently the vice president of his college Republican club. He said he's currently uh, supporting Vivek Ramaswamy. James, welcome. Hi, what college, you? by the way? Oh, Ramapo College. Ramapo, sure. Um, you've made it clear um, you do not believe that the 2020 election was rigged against former President Trump. What is your message to the people in the Republican Party that still believe the election was stolen? Look, my, my message to them is just show me the evidence. It's the same thing that I said to, to Donald Trump in the aftermath of the 2020 election, was show me the evidence. If I see the evidence, I'm happy to support fighting all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court and beyond. But there's no evidence. And, and, and so I'm sorry, all these conspiracy theories, like, you know, he still talks about, oh, they're bringing boxes of ballots into you know, Fulton County, Georgia. No matter how many times we explain to him, well, that's the way they do it. The ballots get collected at the local places in Fulton County, and then the boxes get brought to the central place to be counted. So of course, all night, boxes of ballots are being brought in. But people see little clips on the internet of video, whatever, and, and he's saying it. See, to me, this is the most destructive thing he's done. People want to believe the president of the United States, right? And, and even when it's a president that I don't agree with, it's Jason, right? James, sorry, James. James, even when it's a president we don't agree with, if it's something really important, we want to believe them. Because we also want to believe that they know stuff that we don't know. And so if they're telling us something, and he, that's when it was over for me with Donald. When he stood behind the seal of the president in the East Room of the White House at 2.30 in the morning on election morning and said the election was stolen. Now, let me tell you something, everybody. If it had been, which it wasn't, he'd have no damn idea at that point. All the votes hadn't even counted yet. Governor Chris, let me actually just play that moment because you've, you've talked about this moment as being the critical moment yeah. for you. And I just want to play it to remind our viewers. This is a fraud on the American public. Yes. This is an embarrassment to our country. Yes. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. Yeah. It's, it's a very sad... It's a very sad moment. To me, this is a very sad moment. And we will win this. And we, as far as I'm concerned, we already have won it. So that was the East Room of the White House. Yeah. What about that moment changed it for you? All right, look. How many, how many people out here are parents? Can you raise your hand? All right. Look, that's like when your kid comes home from school with a bad grade. And you're like, well, how did this happen? The teacher's unfair. Uh, the, the, the test was rigged. It was none of the stuff that she told us to study. And, 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 and the guy next to me was talking the entire time and distracting me, and that's why I did bad on the test. That is a child. It's a child. That's a child's reaction, everybody. Every parent out there recognizes it, knows it. We were about to win. What? You were winning for a time in certain states. Why? Because some states counted the machine votes first, and those generally tended to be for Republicans. Other states, like Ohio, he was losing in the beginning. He's not complaining about the Ohio result, though, is he? He was losing for hours in Ohio because they counted the mail-in ballots first. Then they counted the machine ballots, and he won Ohio by, like, eight points. It's a child's reaction. And I just, I, I beg you to think about this. Don't allow the showmanship to obscure the facts. The facts are he lost to Joe Biden. And he lost to Joe Biden, in my opinion, because he lost independent voters. And he lost independent voters because they took a chance on him in 2016 because they didn't like Hillary Clinton. I'm all for that. But guess what? They wanted to see performance. I'll tell you one quick story, Anderson. Mary Pat and I sat with him on Valentine's Day 2017 and had lunch with him in the dining room off the Oval Office. And he said to me, What's your political advice for me? And I said, Mr. President, you didn't win the election. She lost it. She blew it. But it doesn't matter, because look where we're sitting. 
You're the president. So now, make the next four years about the country. And if you make the next four years about the country, you're going to get reelected in the landslide. Make it about them, not about you. And if you do that, you're going to win. And he looked at me, and you'll remember this. He shook his head and he goes, ah, Chris, you worry too much. I think I was worried just enough. I want you to meet uh, Kristen Gourier. She's a student at Harvard Law School, working in New York City. She's a Republican and says she's currently supporting Governor DeSantis. Kristen, welcome. Hi, Governor Christie. Hey there. Um, my question is, President Trump significantly increased tariffs on Chinese goods. President Biden has mostly kept these tariffs in place. Would you reduce, maintain, or increase tariffs on China if you were elected president? I would make it part of an overall negotiation to reset our relationship with China. We need to make the Chinese understand that, like, the party's over. For the last 50 years, we have been investing in China to try to bring them into the community of nations and to try to make them better because we thought it would make us better too. And in some ways it has. We have great trade with China over a long period of time. And by great, I mean a large volume of it. But the Chinese have taken advantage of our good nature, stealing our intellectual property, spying on us, causing trouble around the world, unfair trade deals, and it's time for that to stop now. They're no longer a fledgling economy. They're the second largest economy in the world and inching up on us. And so what I would do on tariffs would be to say, look, they don't like those tariffs, and those tariffs also increase prices for some of us, right? But we're not gonna get rid of that stuff until they decide to be fair on those other things. You come up with a great idea, intellectual property, you should be able to own that. And if they want to use it, they pay you for it, not steal it from you. TikTok is here in this country. We let them in. Facebook and Twitter are not in China. They want Facebook. They're going to let Facebook, Twitter, and our social media into China. I'll let TikTok stay. They don't. TikTok goes in the Christie administration. They need to understand that we will be fair, but we won't be chumps. And so I don't want to give that away on the CNN town hall in June of 2023. I want to use it as a card that we can negotiate with going forward smartly so that we, we write this relationship. Because if we don't write this relationship, it will be the relationship that defines the world for the next 50 years. And I'd rather that have, to have that be a prosperous, fair, competitive relationship rather than a relationship that involves warfare.